At the end of the last video, we looked at an example of a permutation which wasn't a cycle, but it was equal to the composition of two disjoint cycles. What we're going to do at the start of this video is not to prove, but to see why it's true that every permutation is equal to a composition or product of disjoint cycles. If you want to see a detailed proof, you can find that in the type notes. But you'll see it gets rather complicated, and what I want to do in this video is to show you the idea of why it's true. So for our sketch proof, we're going to think about a permutation f in Sn. So in other words, f is going to be a bijection from the set 1, 2, 3 up to n to the set 1, 2, 3 up to n. And we're going to illustrate f in the usual way, which is that if f of i equals j, well then we'll draw a line from i to j. So these dots that you can see on the side of the screen here, these are supposed to illustrate the numbers 1, 2, 3 up to n. And I'm going to start drawing arrows to illustrate when f of one of these numbers is equal to another. So let's say, for example, we start off by thinking about this one of these numbers here, and we say that f maps this number to this number. So I'm drawing an arrow like that. And then let's think about where f sends the target of that arrow. So let's say it does this, and let's think where f sends that. So perhaps it sends it here, perhaps f sends the result of that here. And my question for you, which you should pause the video and think about, is why can't it do this? All right, I hope you did pause the video. Um, I mean, the reason that it can't do this is because f is supposed to be a one-to-one -one function. Uh, every permutation is a bijection. Every bijection is an injective and surjective function. In particular, it's one-to-one. -one. If we had a picture like this, then there are two distinct elements of the set one, two up to n, whose image is this thing here. So that means that your function f is not one-to-one. -one. So because our function is one-to-one, -one, this can't happen. So in fact, if we just keep going and going and going, well, eventually, as we trail around our path of arrows, eventually we must revisit a point we've already seen, because there's only finitely many points, so we can't keep on going on visiting new points forever. What that argument shows is that eventually, when you first repeat yourself, what must happen is that you go back to where you started. In other words, you have a cycle. So, this shows us how to find cycles for an arbitrary permutation f. If we keep following the image of f and then the image of the image of a particular number, and then the image of that image, and then the image of that image of that image, we must eventually go around in a cycle. And if we, once having found a cycle, start again somewhere else, we know again that what must happen is we go round and round and round, and when we first repeat ourselves, it must be that we go back to the place where we started. So you can imagine continually doing this, and when you do it, what you must end up with when you've visited all of the numbers between 1 and n is a product of disjoint cycles. And again, the reason that they're disjoint is precisely that f must be 1 to 1. So when I was drawing my last cycle there, I can't, for example, have gone from here into another cycle like this, because then there would be an element, this one, which stopped f being 1 to 1. OK, so let's draw back in my nice arrow again. OK, so this method actually not only hopefully convinces you why every permutation is a product of disjoint cycles, but also gives you a method of finding out exactly which disjoint cycles you need to express a given permutation. 
And that's what we're going to do on this next slide. Um, we're going to look at how to express a permutation given to us, for example, in two row form as a product of disjoint cycles. So here's the procedure which comes out of our idea that we drew on the last slide. To write a permutation f as a product of disjoint cycles, what you do is first start off by picking a number, let's call it m, which is not yet in one of the cycles that you found, and then find f of m, and f of f of m, and f of f of f of m, and so on, until you first get back to m, and then what you have is a cycle. So you can then write that cycle down, and if there are no numbers left not in a cycle, then you stop. And if there are numbers left which aren't in a cycle, then you go back to step one and choose a new number which isn't yet in one of your cycles. Let's try that out on the example which I've written down here. So here is a function f in two-row notation, a permutation f in two-row notation, and we're going to express f as a product of disjoint cycles using our three-stage procedure. So let's start off with 1, for example, and if I look at 1, well, f of 1 equals 7, f of f of 1, that's f of 7, is equal to 4, f of f of f of 1 is f of 4, which is equal to 1. So that means my first cycle in my decomposition is 1 goes to 7, goes to 4, goes back to 1 again. Now we're on stage three. Uh, are there any numbers left not in a cycle? Well, the answer is yes, two is not in a cycle yet. So let's think about f of two. f of two is equal to six. f of six is equal to five. And f of five is equal to two again. So again, we've gone round in a cycle. We're back to two. So we have a new cycle, which is two goes to six goes to five goes back to 2 again. Uh, we're on stage 3. Are there any numbers left not yet in a cycle? Uh, yes, we don't have 3 in a cycle yet. So we now look at f of 3. And f of 3 is 3 again. So what we would normally do is write down this new cycle like this. But as we said a couple of lectures ago, one cycles are always the identity. And we try and avoid writing down one cycles because they too look too much like what happens, what the notation we use is when we evaluate a function at an input. So to avoid any confusion, what we'll do is just not write any one cycles since they're the identity and composing with the identity doesn't do anything. There's no loss of generality in just omitting them. Okay, so here is our expression for f as a product of disjoint cycles. We've now finished because there are no numbers left which are not in a cycle. We've dealt with all of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and we found the cycles for f. Okay. A good question then um, from my last example is, but you know, why did I start with the number one? I found in my last example that f was equal to the product one seven four two six five. But you know, why, what if I started with two instead of one? There was no reason I had to start by looking at f of one and f of f of one and f of f of f of one and so on. So if I'd done that, I would have got something different. I would have actually ended up with. If I started with 2 instead of 1, I would have ended up with writing f as 265174. And there's no problem with this. Both of these things are perfectly true. f is equal to both of those expressions. So this slide is about the fact that there is more than one way to write a given permutation as a product of disjoint cycles. And there's two, reason for this, two reasons for this non-uniqueness. So first of all, as I said a couple of lectures ago, you're going to show that if C and D are disjoint cycles, then they commute with one another. So that means you can write two disjoint cycles, like this one and this one, in any order you like. Secondly, you know that there are multiple different ways to write a given M cycle. In fact, there are M different ways to write an M cycle. So here is an illustration of the three different ways to write the three cycle, one, two, three. 
So this gives us many, many ways to write a permutation as a product of disjoint cycles. There is not one and only one correct way to do this. So just to, pro um, to continue our example, f is equal to 1, 7, 4, 2, 6, 5, and it's also equal to 5, 2, 6, 1, 7, 4, and it's also equal to 2, 6, 5, 7, 4, 1, and there is a whole bunch of other ways to write it as well. So you must be careful and you must remember that there is not just one way to write a permutation as a product of disjoint cycles. There are many different ways to do this in general.